Hello, I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And we are here for another Research Friday. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be covering a research article. And if you would like to check out that article, you can just check the link below. Okay, so today what we're talking about is a case report, common peroneal nerve palsy with multiple ligament knee injury and distal abulsion of the bicep femoris tendon. Uh, you're the anatomist. I am not. Uh, okay. You said a lot of big words in there. Yes, I did. I'm still trying to follow you on the first one. Okay, so if we look at the outside of the knee. So we're talking about, this is talking about somebody with a knee injury or? It's talking about a knee injury, but also with a nerve injury. Okay, so somebody who might have a foot drop. Yeah, somebody exactly with a right. foot drop, because the nerve that runs down the outside of your leg, Okay. and that foot drop, you know, you see people when they walk and they hear the flop, yep. the flop, okay? That's called foot drop, and that can come from a couple of different areas. It can come from the back, it can come from uh, the knee, Okay. and in this case, we're going to be talking about the knee. All right. Yeah, I know most folks think when you have a foot drop, you automatically think disc. Oh, oh I've yeah. I've got a disc problem, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so it's really interesting when you look at this. You said common peroneal nerve palsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're talking about something where we're talking either short-term or long-term loss. Uh, this is more long-term loss. Okay. Yep. This is actually someone who was uh, doing judo and had a major, um, what was happening is he was bent forward at the hip, which flexes the main nerve mm -hmm. going down the back of the leg, sciatic nerve. It branches off um, and it runs on the outside of the leg called the common peroneal. Okay. And what happened is then his knee hyperextended. So he did a double whammy on this thing. Yeah, I did read that they talked about a lot of these injuries for, for some folks is they get hyperextension yep. with some valgus of the knee. Yes. So that knee goes out. Goes out. And then yep. for some, they also have hip flexion involved. Mm -hmm. And so it's this mm -hmm. kind of, I'm bent forward, I've actually hyperextended my knee, and my knee goes out. Yep. And what that is, is imagine um, like a rope. Yeah. And it gets, not only it gets pulled, but also it gets push to the outside so there's so much tension on that outside and on that, that outside knee. we've got a couple muscles that sit out there yeah we do we've got the bicep femoris okay it's one of the hamstring muscles that one's often forgotten oh of course yeah it always is i mean it wraps around the lateral femoral head yes it does Wrap, wraps completely around it then what we've also got is that the, the ligaments out there so we've got our medial collateral ligament yep. or collateral means just on the outside it's on the outside um and then what you've got is you've got your uh, meniscus Mm -hmm. out there too, your medial meniscus, um, and, in the, and also your ACL, your anterior cruciate ligament, yep. one that keeps the knee from going forward, and your posterior cruciate ligament, the one that keeps it from going back. So you've got a lot of ligaments from the medial out that, can, that you can get a lot of issues with really fast. Yeah, and so we saw in these, and now they're case studies, yeah. which I know some people would say, well, case study, sorry, not much weight. Um, yeah. But I think it's interesting, we, we start learning from case studies. Yeah. From case studies can develop different thought processes and develop research articles. Cool. So when you see somebody with the foot drop, you're mm -hmm. saying, and what this, these case studies also kind of conclude, is you can't just look at the low back. No, you can't, because you've got to follow the path of the nerve. I mean, you could have a, a foot drop down in the ankle. If it was bad enough, if you had a, a major inversion sprain and it was dislocated, you could have it there too. So yeah, I saw a random case of that in the trucking industry. We had a case of foot drop that was mm -hmm. from the lateral aspect of the anterior tailor. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, so, so yeah, a case study might not hold much weight, but you need to use your brain and you need to think outside the box and understand where can this happen. So if I clear out low back, do a great exam like we've covered before, yep. um, it's not coming from the low back. It's not coming from the hip. Well, where else is it coming from? Maybe it's coming from the knee. Yeah, and I think kind of what I'm hearing from your, your follow-up on this study is, is really it's important to not only pay attention to the exam, but also the events that led up to that injury. Yeah, I um, mean, you could have an old soccer player that all of a sudden... So my foot just started to drop. Well, have you ever hyperextended your knee before? Yeah, I have. Oh. So really, history is important in this case. Yep. Yep. Pay attention to history. Look at the, the knee as a possible contributor to the foot mm -hmm. drop. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if findings are consistent, you can follow up with certain imaging or specialist evaluation. Yeah. I mean, or if conservative care fails. 
Yes, and then you go to the surgical route or get an, a, surg a surgeon involved. And this article talks about what they did for this guy. And I loved it. I, I loved it. They went through the positive ortho test, and it was a, it's a great case study. Yeah, it's a good case study to look at, good case study to review. They've got anatomical pictures of not mm -hmm. only the dissections, but also mm -hmm. the surgical procedures yep. that were performed. And the MRIs. So yep. it's a, a worthwhile uh, article to actually review mm -hmm. and, and kind of re-educate yourself about the common anatomy that's involved. And it, once you do, and then you just know what's going on and how to better diagnose people. Common peroneal nerve palsy. Um, with a potential avulsion of the bicep femoris. Mm -hmm. Once again, if you want to take a look at the article, it's the link below. Check the link below. I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And we'll see you next Friday. Next Friday.